die. I wanna die. die. These tears spring from my eyes. Every since you said goodbye. Welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. Yeah, we're back again to talk about all the cool shit on the internet. I'm the best guy ever, and I'm joined by my basket of deplorables, as always, uh, Ben Saint. That's me, every bubby. Digibro. We're going to put some procrast right up yo ass. <laughs> and hypocrite. Oof. Wah. Uh, And so, as everyone famously knows now, we are doing a new thing where we're getting suggestions for topics off of Twitter. So everybody go to... Yeah, it's You tweeted it like five minutes ago. No, that's not what I'm saying. Like, we, I, last episode, or before last, because we we decided to do Pokemon on our own. But before that, we're doing a thing where we're just questions, topics people ask us on uh, our Twitter is what we're just going to talk about on the show that they've asked just throughout the week. So anytime, go to Twitter and uh, tweet at T. P. Crastinators. But, but by the time you're hearing this, it will be too late. Well, for next week. Uh, no, for next ben week, yeah, misunderstanding for next week. that the concept, we, this podcast, the crying oh, podcast, right, right. was suggested on Twitter. Oh, who suggested oh. this name? Oh, uh, yeah, right, right. So this was suggested by um, Palm Top Vulture or at Pop Vulture, uh, hmm. and the the their suggestion was. <clears throat> As a suggestion for a podcast topic, how about art and moments in media that make you cry? So thank you, Pop Vulture. Uh, I think we're going to expand that a little bit to... That make I just us thought cry it'd be fun to talk or about that made crying. us cry? That oh, make, apparently. Uh, but, the tense uh, there is important for me. Is it? So it's just, they <laughs> yes. asked make. They asked make you cry, so well, still I, to this day. I don't think mm-hmm. there's anything that will make me cry consistently. And if there is, then I don't exactly. know how to test it. Like, That's... I'd have to watch something every single year and update my did this make me cry uh, ometer, which is not something. I'm not the. T- I know some people who do that. I know some people who are like, I watch it every month and I cry every time. But uh, I don't <laughs> no, usually see, watch something see, that's more than funny. once every few years. That, that's what's funny because I am probably the biggest media crybaby that I know. I cry all the time when I'm watching stuff. Uh, like whenever I watch, whenever I just hear Sorairo Days come on the radio. I, mm. I or not on the radio, but like on my you know, fucking MP3 player, whatever. I cry. Um, My friend Ghost Lightning know, has said a lot that of he's stuff. cried many times just hearing that song. Wait, um, sorry, I, I do it to I'm, all kinds I'm of stupid. anime Which one's Sorairo Days? It's, it's well, specifically, it, it calls, it's the opening of Gurren Lagann. But it, it calls to mind. Oh, oh, the Gurren, when did you say the Gurren Lagann theme, did you Well, ask? everyone, yeah. Okay, but the thing is, uh, what makes me cry listening to songs like that uh, is is the the emotions it evokes. So whenever I listen to that song, that song is the the insert song, which I every time they do the the theme song of a show during the big climax finale, it's always a ten out of ten best thing ever. They I do. cry every time I hear "Row Row Fight the Power" and I think of that picture of the bird sitting on the sign that says "No Birds." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, that's that is a good one. Uh, it's but a good but meme. so when I it's good when meme. I hear that song. I just, I, because that song plays in its entirety throughout the climax, I just, in my mind, play the movie of how it starts off with the da 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 That's when, uh, uh fucking, um, oh, someone's like, Titan no, theme. not yet! And then Lord Genome is like, Shibon! And then the, the whole, like, the whole sequence plays up to the ultimate victory over the anti-spiral. So it just calls that whole greatest scene ever to my mm. mind. And that's true I, of just, like, every, I kind of want to ask, great song like that. I mean, I don't, like, tears don't form in my eyes but there's lots of like things that i like get really emotional about and i'm like mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah it's the coolest thing ever but tears don't come i'm wondering like i don't well yeah that, i don't I'm, actually cry a lot personally but... i'm gonna try to be very rigid with this i'm only going to select things where i have shed at least one actual tear not just teared up not just welling, like eyes full of tears. No, something has to fall down my cheek because you have I have to feel a list. that sensation of the tear rolling down the yeah, cheek. I, That's I, my method. Oh, I never, in, I never get tears. There's only one. That never there's, happens. There's maybe two 
th- uh, times where I can remember that happening off the top of my head. Two um, times? Well, yeah. Man. Like a well, 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 time for the, a podcast, right? Welling there. up is as far as I go emotionally. I, I felt tears rolling down my face just watching Shelter the other day. And uh, I've kind of cooled off on it, but at the time, at its peak, but the, the reason really I ask me. about the tear thing is that I think just mm-hmm. some people make tears more than others. Yeah, yeah, like, and that's the, true. The, you get to a, like, an emotional level where you would be crying if you made as much tears I, as someone else. Even I can mm-hmm. be like, I can be like sobbing, and tears aren't actually rolling down my face. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I think I if it, yeah, I think I'd... if it's sobbing, it counts. I think yeah. we're gonna classify this as. It was not something that lasted like a half a second, you know, because like I I have lots of things that will make me tear up for like half a second when it's right at the emotional climax, like right at that moment. But Mm. then, you know, the second it's over, it all just dries right back out. You you know, the problem, you know, it's not there anymore. The problem with you guys is that uh, I'm I'm a golden god, and you guys, all your tear ducts are clogged with all that fat, all that fat fuckery <laughs> just filling up that shit. They can't squeeze them through. That's your problem. <laughs> it, Hit the it's, treadmill, it's, my friends. You want some you, healthy you, crying. You got to be a vegan like that guy in Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like, that's like right. you, you know, you know how most powers. people only use ten percent of their brains because the other ninety percent <laughs> is all full of curds and whey. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So yeah, it, it seems pretty clear that uh, people have different like degrees of their crying capacity. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. it's it's something that I've got like rolled eyes at like people like oh you don't cry because I don't often, mm-hmm, but it's mm-hmm. it's like I don't literally tear up, but I do get emotional about things, and people always say oh you're just you're just pretending to be tough you fucking loser, and I don't like uh, that. It's like I want to like say that, mm-hmm. for for the record I also don't don't cry much, which is why. Like I'm being so strict about it because there is such a mm-hmm. small, tiny kinda, pool of times I have shed actual tears cast. that I literally have a list. I have a list well, of every individual tear I've shed while consuming <laughs> media. Lol, so Jesus Christ! I'm, well, that's interesting. I'm going to go I, through it in the course of this podcast. I could I could list too many to name. So uh, I, I I really am a big crier. I cry a lot when I when I do all well, kinds of media stuff. So I, there's no point in going through my. I could list. bring up one that a lot of you might also agree with, which is the ending okay. of Toy Story three. Oh yeah. Lots of people well, which cry part specifically? Because there's I Anna's part, and then there's the think, death I, it part. Was, I don't it's the think bit, I cried at the ending of Toy Story Three. It's the bit near the end the uh, mm-hmm. where Andy's given the toys away, and he's like, "Oh yeah, God. that's the one." I'm, I'm yeah, 17, but I still sort of care about these for some reason. But I'm giving them to yeah. a little girl. And I'm saying goodbye forever, and it's like I don't know, everyone that. gets their little moments when when he's just like, "This is Ham. He's dinosaur, like the, the evil Baron." Oh my God! Lightning! I want your dark souls. Raven, pure. Dinosaur, it's a lone dinosaur. I hope you're recording this, Jesse, because this is gold, and the people are gonna want to hear it. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here, Jesse. We were just talking yeah. about how we wanted you. What are we? What's the topic this week, Jesse? Crying. It's, topic, it's media cry. that's made you cry, which I know you have oh. basically everything. Oh boy! <laughs> Let me tell you, people, about crying. You know, old Uncle Endless has been doing a lot of that lately, and. Uh, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> by, by by lately I mean the last twenty seven years. So I, I've got a lot of material for this one. I've cried a thousand tears and I'll cry a thousand yeah. more. I have oh, in, yeah. I have both on video and in person witnessed Jesse literally <laughs> crying while describing something. Uh I know it, it yeah. happens in the Batman vs. Superman video when he reads um reads that passage from that Batman comic and right, i believe you shed way. an actual tear that glistened in the light of your <laughs> of your uh, basement that glistened in the light of my yellow room an yeah. actual yeah. Tear. the golden a, gleam a pea yeah. stained tear rolling down yeah. my, <laughs> rolling down my jaundiced cheek yeah. And and I could hear that you were crying in the 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 second panel cast when you described the Spider Man yeah. uh, scene. Yeah, I, I cried. Um, I cried twice in that panel cast, and I cut one of them out because it was it was too much. One of them. Jesse and me, I think, are birds <laughs> of a feather when it comes to crying. Uh, we, we seem more predisposed to to this kind of uh, gay activity as opposed to you guys. <laughs> you know, I have. Um, it's, it's the most straight thing time. in the world. I agree. Over time, I have... I mean, as a kid, I always didn't want to cry. And that's still Mm -hmm. sort of true. Like, I, every time tears come, it's like, it's unnatural, it's unusual. I don't... I'm not used to this. And I try and stuff it back, even though I'm alone. It's true. I feel that. I feel, feel like, kind of weirdly self-conscious about it. When it it happens, I'm like, is this right? Is this right? (laughs) Yeah, I know what you mean. 
uh, but I, I actually but I want, feel I, want I feel bad about not crying. Like I have so many times where I'm witnessing something emotional and I'm starting to get there, but I don't cry, and then I worry that I'm just such a jaded like. Like, yeah. like, like that that I've I'm so broken that I can't even cry at anything, and I, mean, I have a I, mean, I have a real legitimate jealousy of Jesse's like whenever I see Jesse feeling something so strongly, I'm like, why can't I feel anything that strongly? Why can't I feel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, why am I so numb? Oh, it, it, it's it's, a, it's a gift and it's a curse, buddy. Let me tell you. Yeah, it's it's my I, burden. I'm sure I wouldn't want it if I was on the other end when it when that pendulum <laughs> swings think, in the other direction. I think I, I you know I I might be like the most Sorry. emotional person I've ever ever met in my life and it's a it's a terrible terrible thing you know that's funny i actually kind of feel guilty i i also second guess myself like ben uh when it's like is this right but the thing is i'm usually already crying by that point <laughs> and i'm just kind of like oh am i do do i i because that's the thing I, I feel like i cry too easily and i worry that it's uh it's cheapening it even though it doesn't matter to anyone except me but i kind of value my own cries and i don't want to pass them out like fucking candy you know mm -hmm. i want them to be important and yeah matter, i guess, but, I guess uh, when when you, you you talk about something you like and you said mm -hmm. oh yeah it was so good it made me cry that's like a like a an indicator of how emotional and how good that's it is. right and if that's you cry right. at something that you're like oh i guess i don't really care about it but i cried so a man's tears take? are like a woman's vagina. They need to only be shared with the public on very rare occasions, or else you're trash. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's All what right, Real quick, with. before we even continue any further, let's do a sync test with Jesse. Uh, okay. On the count of three, say cry. Mm. One, two, three, cry. 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 Okay, that's good enough. Okay. Um, just had to make sure before that, before, I, don't, I don't want us to get to the that's end fair. and then we don't remember at the end. That's uh, fair. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we've talked a lot about our, like, philosophies of crying to media. Mm -hmm. We need more actual examples. We know Nate cries every time he hears the opening well, theme of Gurren Lagann. Um, I do, every time. Oh, also the one where, um, you know, like, there's, what, there's one in the middle of the episode where Simone becomes a man when, uh, when he finally, you know, sacks out oh, episode yeah, yeah, yeah. 11. That the, one, too. That one, one too. where I mean, Nia's behind him and he's for, got the cross. For a recent that's example. Right, that's right. Um, she ba da ba 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 da ba ba da ba 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 da 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 the show that we watched uh, for Plebe and the Weed, Planetaria, got me pretty oh, close yeah. once or twice there. I, yeah, I remember. That I kept a well looking over it and uh, emotional narrative. I kept Are looking we over go and on seeing Ben and Jesse almost like made a... us cry. It was the fucking closest was... I've had in a while. Well, okay? Know, okay, all right, all right. Honestly, well, it looked like Ben was crying. I don't know if there was any tears, but I kept mm -hmm. looking over at Ben and Jesse who were losing their shit, and that's they, why. For for anyone there were, who there were there were some tears welling up and my lip was quivering. You know, yeah. that's okay. That's, all right. For anyone who doesn't know why for. we ended the plebe and the weeb that way because it was because it was such an emotional episode and we had just been watching baby cakes diary number two which mm. is the episode where uh you know baby cakes and his dad and his granddad they all just like break down crying after this like this huge like it's this this crazy emotional yeah. turn that the episode takes where they all start singing and crying and they just destroy everything in the house and burn it down and we all thought it was like the most emotionally poignant expression ever so after it watching is. this this show we were all like standing around talking about how feelsy it was we were like oh my god the emotions ah oh, we can't take it and i was like what if we just unleash and we just like break everything in the set just like in baby cakes and it would be the perfect expression of how emotional this show made us feel. Um, though it, it ended up being portrayed more that we were all mad about me uh, not giving the show a high enough <laughs> score. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it didn't, it didn't quite have that baby cakes pathos. Uh, no. But, I mean, what does? No, nothing true. does. True, true. So, okay, I, let's hear some well, more. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, Gib, go ahead. Oh, Gib, turn. There we go. Uh... Right. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, the the only other one I can think of off the top of my head, there's probably more, um, is the ending of Okami. I don't know if any of you mm. have played that. Not yeah, I hated the ending of Okami, but, but I uh, let's hear, I'm interested in your reason. Remember the well, ending very well. The, the ending was like, you go through the whole world, of, the whole of Japan, and then you mm -hmm. save the world, but then Okami has to, to leave forever, and, he ne and right. she never gets right. to come back. You, and you mean Amaterasu? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think Okami is a pretty cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know, kind what, of what she, I just, whatever. I think of Okami whatever. literally means great god, which is what she is, so technically She's that's appropriate. Great. Okay. And then oh, Isun right. has to I'm go and, and spread the tale of, of everything that happened to everyone alone. Man, that was Yo, a great and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what was. Sad. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But what I what I did game, really dude, love about so that good. part, the best part to me was when you're uh, fighting, I forget the name of the big bad, but you're fighting the big bad in that heaven ship, and you have to. 
This is a moment that might have brought some tears years ago, and I just don't remember. But it's when, over over the course of the game, you've helped everyone in Japan in all these various ways. And at the end, it is their prayers to you, the god, that give you the power you need to finally defeat it and overcome yeah, yeah. and become god mode Amaterasu. Now that I was mean, a great, emotionally I mean, powerful all moment. all of that ending, and then the credits song as well, the, yeah. the, the thank you reset or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. That's just got all the, the cool parts. It's uh, a great game, man. It's, it's a really good song. I cry to that occasionally. Mm -hmm. Almost cry. Uh, Jesse, you had you were about to say one, it sounded like. What? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. There's There's a lot of, like... Like, I could name, like, a million movies and stuff and, like, things that... Video games that make me cry. But what really always just just really opens up a hole inside me just like just rips me open and destroys me all the time is just when i think about my friends not you guys my actual friends the ones <laughs> right, of course, the of ones course. that when i hang out with you guys i feel guilty about not being around them and i resent you guys mm -hmm. a little bit for even being a part of my life you know mm. we're enablers yeah, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. So, like, uh, Go, where are we where are we going with that? Jeff? Just, I just, I just, I just really wanted to confess how much I hate and resent all of you. Okay. But, okay. Uh, Jesse, right. I, no, like, I hate to say it, nobody gives a shit because uh, this is about media that makes I don't you cry. Give a nobody fuck. cares about this your... is our media, and it's gonna make everyone in the world cry when they hear it because I'm mm. connecting with my audience like I always do because I'm the best guy at that. Damn you! Mm -hmm. You know, fucking you, you what? Fuck. I hate them. Sure, so, sure. Okay. All right. That's fair. This is a media. This show makes sense to me. No, it's terrible. Oh I'm yeah. A, I'm Every fucking... time I listen to the Procrastinators podcast, I well up a little inside. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, about in my that case, my life has become this. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a bummer. <laughs> no, it's you know it's, I really, I, I really have a lot of sentiment inside me for the people close to me, and it really, it really makes me a a wreck if I if I if I dwell on it too much. Like uh, you know, like a. Like, I'll have some friend, or you know, and she's, like, going through a breakup or anything, and she's, like, all crying, and, and I'm just, like, trying to help her, and I'm just, like, trying to tell her how much that she means to me, but then just saying that is making me cry, so now I'm crying harder than her, and it's like, who the hell is supposed to be cheering up who at this point? And so then I'm the mm. weirdo, and so then I gotta <laughs> fucking, everyone's judging me, so then I go to a party, and I, I'm the fucking guy at the party crying. Nobody wants to be <laughs> the, the, the crying guy at the party. Nobody wants to be sitting there crying into another man's birthday cake, and everyone's yeah. fucking... No. No, no one, no one came there looking for a reenactment of the day the clown cried, but they got it. <laughs> you Not know, uh, that's really that's interesting, Jesse. Uh, you seem like a very empathetic person, uh, and it, it's it, it amuses me. Or this is something I've been thinking about a little you. bit. <laughs> well, it, it does, it does. Uh, well, that, that's actually kind of the thing, because like I've been thinking lately how you know how I'm all about like I'm I'm a. I'm a futurist, and I want the, I want humanity to succeed and go to the stars, <laughs> and I want all these Jesse's things to happen. Like, you fucking yeah, sociopath. I'm in the middle of an emotional breakdown at a party, and I'm crying. I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind, and Nate's like, oh, amusing. <laughs> that amuses me. <laughs> well, that, I, I, all right, it does, uh, because I was just thinking about how uh, I want all these things for humanity. Maybe interests and I, I, would have been a better word than amusing. Yeah, okay. Or it, it does interest me. It, it, it <laughs> makes me think of something else that relates to me, which is cool, uh, which is just how I, I don't give a shit about people on an individual level basically at all. Uh, like, I'll see people, and I'll just I'll hate them. I'll just hate them for no reason. <laughs> when like I, I want the best for humanity, but I well, just hate everyone. Well, I Nate, want everyone dead. Nate, let me let me yeah. let me respond to that. I I feel the same way a lot of the time. You know, I feel mm -hmm. all misanthropic and like, oh, I hate people and I hate everyone. And you know, yeah. I get frustrated at people a lot. But I always, like, every single fucking time when when I actually come to know someone i always think better of them than i did that is true when i that first true. like saw them and got my you know initial impression was like oh this person's just this this person's just that this person must suck in these or that ways and then i'm like i'm always i always change my mind so Could i try i try to keep it in mind i try to tell myself like don't judge that person you know you would like them more if you got to know them you always do That's but like uh... It's 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 you it's, know just it's, my, my it's natural a, inclination is to be like a, oh fuck that guy but yeah, that's I try a very to, I mature try to point it. there Ben I try to fight well, point you know I it's funny because it. mm -hmm. much like with the like what we said about crying earlier where I said I kind of like feel broken because I can't cry as much as I want to I yeah. feel similarly 
about like other people where like I ass- I kind of always assume that everyone's great. Like I assume everyone I see, I'm like that guy's probably doing something interesting or has something going on in his life what the fuck more than what I you? have. <laughs> you would think that. <laughs> but then I but then I have no ability to connect with any of those people and I don't feel like pressured to do so. And like mm-hmm. even like what Jesse talking about his friends who he's like, you know, I miss them and wish I connected with them more. Like I've kind of completely don't even talk to any of my friends anymore. Like ever since Ben and Devu moved in, I, I've gotten to the the like. I mean, I was already pretty alienated from my friends because of the fact that they all have different interests and we don't do any of the same stuff. Yeah. And I'm not the type to go out of my way to put myself in a situation where I'd hang out with them. And now that I've got Ben and Devu, I just don't even talk to him anymore. Like I haven't even seen half of my friends in three uh, months. Although, plus, to be fair, like we haven't seen each other in days because I haven't yeah. left my room. Ben has I've been. been Ben has been straight up in his room for like three days I've, now playing I've been, Pokemon. I've been sick. I haven't had any desire to leave my room lately. I yeah. have. I saw Devu once, and I saw you for like a second when you oh. asked me if I left water boiling, which I didn't because I'm. Thank responsible. God you've got the curative power of the vape to to nurse yeah. you back to the health. The vape well, is what uh, fucking caused this problem. I'm convinced. I'm what? convinced it dehydrated <laughs> my throat and and caused this whole nonsense. I don't know. Yeah, possibly. Well, I still see Victor and Devu, so. Um, you know, as long as I see like one person a day, even if it's only for five minutes, I feel like I've got a ton of social interaction for that day. Mm. Something happened in between me making <laughs> 300 videos uh, every single fucking day of my life. Uh, but we have gotten completely off the topic of crying in media. This is now just a piece of media for people to cry I, to, as Jesse I described. expected this to be uh, just a sort of a general emotional discourse. I mean, because I don't think the guy really cares that much about, like, when the tear physically comes down your cheek. It's about, it's about, uh, uh, it's like that Futurama episode where, you know, when, uh, when uh, that, uh, fuck, the, the Asian girl, she's going to marry that little Amy. green alien man. Kiff. Yeah, the, the Kiff, right. It's, it's not about the Kip, fact that Kip. he touches Leela and it was Leela's DNA that became his his little babies it's it's about the person who evokes that feeling that causes him to be able to reproduce which just happens to manifest in the first person he Incidentally, touches. you who know what I has, mean who all has cried watching Futurama there's oh, so many yeah. times I probably cried absolutely, absolutely. Pretty emotional show, the yeah. dog man yeah. yeah he waited he waited he always waited I'm, he didn't I'm sure. forget because I, I, I mean, it's been in fucking ages since I saw any of those episodes for the first time. The dog one's emotional. The one about his brother, yeah. where he realizes oh, yeah. that's the, the one. Yeah, that's, yeah. The that's the one. one. That's the about, best episode. Yeah, everyone, everyone mentions the dog one. I'd forgotten about Yancey. Fucking yeah. Yancey. Yancey's a really emotional one. And, and then mm-hmm. the one where at the end we see how Lila's parents last. took care of her for her whole life, and it plays Baby Love Child by also Pizzicato the one, Five. Um, the one obscure where, uh, Japanese pop band. The one with Fry's yeah. mom, where he. Um, went into her dream at the end. Oh yeah, I remember. I don't that. think I saw that. That wasn't. I don't remember dream. that either. I, I watched a bunch. Yeah, that was Is that, that was a new one? one too. Yeah, it was one of the newer. Newish. Ones. It was okay, new-ish. no, I didn't. I see also it. really love the the very last episode, which just has uh, Leela and Fry just spend their life together, and then at the end, there's I don't know, there's something really emotional about like you want to give it one more round, and then they just like start. Like time loops, and it's oh, it's just yeah. something beautiful well, about how like make these cry, two have this connection. Good and even even now, it's just it's just really getting to me how much these two guys have come to care about each other. That's that's beautiful. This podcast that's doesn't beautiful. end until one of us makes someone else cry by way of remembering a scene. <laughs> oh god, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's, it's not gonna happen. Heard it's not gonna happen for me. I'm distracted. I'm distracted um, training for the Pokemon race. <laughs> yeah, Ben, did you have any uh, any particular examples of something that has made you at least emo- Well, you said Planetary. Oh, I, I said Planetary. Yeah. I have oh, another hey, one. I have another one, and maybe you oh, yeah, guys okay. can help me. This is There's a movie that like I cried more watching it than I might have ever cried in my life, Whoa. and I don't remember what it was called. Eternal Sunshine it, of the Spotless Mind. No, I haven't seen no, it. That was a good one. Um, Everyone tells a, me how much like they a, cry at that movie. It's like a romance, sort of, between this like gothy teen girl and this like schlubby middle-aged man. And it's it's got know. a name. Its name is like it's not Harold and Maude, but it's got a name that's like oh, that sounds familiar. Two names. Uh, Lolita. No, <laughs> she's Damn. like a fucking goth or something, and he's. he's I don't and know, it, man. Beetlejuice. I don't know. I, 
People in the comments comment on this shit. It's it's uh, it's a it's a sad romance between like a teen goth chick and this like and this like fucking middle manager tie wearing fat looking. Yeah, you're definitely it is talking Harold about and Maud. I, it, no, I just, that's Harold that's, that's Maud? definitely Beetlejuice. Wait, <laughs> it does sound like Beetlejuice. No, I know there is a Harold and Maud, but I don't think that's it. Oh yeah, I don't think that's it either. Now well, I'm looking at it, you have to do some research, and uh, I don't know. People in the comments say something. And no, I Harold and Maud is like a dark comedy. Hey Ben, here's a, here's a moment uh, that I believe we both cried at the same time. Uh, this is a deeply emotionally moving uh, situation. So Ben and I, when we were very young, were playing Mario RPG, and we got to the very oh, last this boss. This is not exactly is, what no, people are this asking. Is, this is what they want. So, no, so this is what, what happened was, want. wait, you told we were, this story. You've told no, the story didn't. on the show before. Wait, I really? remember. Fucking, who I don't. No, who I, care? Who cares? Did you go on, Nate? All, all right, tell so the people was, what they want to know. I, I will. I'm sure somebody wants to know now. Uh, so uh, we're fighting the very last boss, Smithy. And at yeah. this point, th we're we are babies. We are not s veterans. This was like right. one of our first so, RPGs. So I use I used Mallow. He has an ability yes. that shows you how much HP the boss has. He had psychopath. Like, he had like no HP. He would have died in one hit if I had attacked one that turn. One he would have died. <laughs> and then the guy fucking summoned boulders or whatever like twice in a row and just wiped the whole party. And we've been trying we to beat. We flipped our shit, we've man. We've been trying we to beat that boss it. for so long. We've been playing yeah. Mario RPG for like oh man we fucking cried and that, went that ballistic 40, that, that 26 HP he had left just burned into 26. my mind I'm never gonna forget it might, yeah. it might have been 46 but it was one of our, those two our dad got really upset because the game made us cry he thought he yeah, was mad at the yeah. game for doing that yeah. to us <laughs> yeah I remember man, this video, man. Why, why did you tell the story before maybe it was about parents reacting to video games negatively it, yeah, maybe, maybe. you definitely maybe. told it before though I might, I might not have been there for that but whatever you, how could you not have been there? You told the story. Well, it was I thought, you. Well, I thought you were saying Ben t told it. No, okay, you well, told whatever. the story before. <laughs> well, whatever. They heard it twice. Okay, let's move on. That was a joke anyway. <laughs> I didn't want to dwell on it. Uh, I, I, has everyone gone except Digi now? Gib, did you do one already? Uh, yeah, I, I went. I, I couldn't really think of. I can't really think of any specific mm -hmm. times. There's probably lots of times as a kid, like playing Fire Emblem, where a character died after like mm. 40 hours playing a single level. Yeah, I, you know, to try That's and fair. grind through That's the fair. arenas. Oh, you know what? Like, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, may, uh, here's just one short one. I, I've probably told this story before, but uh, when I was uh, reading One Piece, uh, on the day that uh, Ace died, Luffy's brother died, um, I was supposed to go on a date with my girlfriend and a bunch of our friends. We were all going to go out and do shit in the snow. And um, my ex <laughs> going to go out and shit now. in the snow. That's but but like she comes into my room, I, I I didn't I didn't shed a tear, but I was just sitting in my room. Ace was dead. Luffy was never going to be the same. He was a broken man, and in walks like my girlfriend, and she's like, "All right, Nate, let's go, let's go have fun in the snow." And I'm just like, "What the fuck? Are, uh, my friend, my friend just died, and you want me to go play in the fucking snow?" And she did not understand what was going on. She did. I explained it. Look, Luffy, my my. My buddy Luffy, his brother just died. I can't fucking go on a date right now. And uh, she just was like, she was so mad at me for so long after that. She did not get it. That's why I hate you, Lauren. You're the worst person I've ever known. I hate you. I'll never forgive you for oh, what you God. did to me. Oh, God. Cut this, please. I'm, I'm crying right now. <laughs> you monster. How could you do it? Um, there you go. Um, All right, so that's my Speaking story. of tragedy, um, I don't know if this counts. I don't know. I think I might have teared up a little bit when fucking Goose died. Oh, oh really? But his, not... uh, his lovely Rowlet. Yeah, uh, my well, it was a yeah when when Monkey killed my my fucking uh, flight Aww. commander flight or no flight lieutenant Goose. Look, it, it's not that it wasn't actually sad. I think I was I was much more angry than I was sad. <laughs> That's okay. I think I might have just 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 had like fucking tears of tears of like just frustration and like hating myself for having for having. You that's, know, that's just, fine. I went that's through, like I went a through father's. This, I went through the stages of grief like so hard. I was like, no, it's it's he's not really gonna <laughs> gonna gonna kill Goose. And then I was like, okay, he. But like, it's not, it's not, it's not really that bad, you know. Like, mm -hmm. and then like, oh, but but yeah, it's and that's just, just mad. Just fucking, probably did just some the rage. bargaining. Like, maybe I don't have to nuzlocke this particular Pokemon. Maybe I can just let this one live. The, yeah, the bargaining, yeah, 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 yeah but. It, you know, that's. Uh, I I want to ask. Fair, uh, not, angry tears, angry tears. <laughs> right, we're, we're all we're all very much thinking like you know, consume piece of media, cry. Uh, have any of you had times? Because I've had a few of these where it was more that you watched something 
and then, like, what it made you think about eventually made you have a total fucking breakdown? Like, mm, um, well, you know, yes, and it, even well, more. I'll give an specific. example to kick us off, okay, just so right. I can, just so I can finally share one. Um, okay. This is I did not cry <laughs> watching this show, but an example for me was when I was uh, like in a, when I was going into eleventh grade, and I watched the show Manabi Straight, which is an anime series about a bunch of high schoolers who basically the main character is this girl Manabi who like. Um, becomes a student council president and she's trying to have like a great student uh, festival on like the last you know the, the last year that she's going to be in high school and this high school's kind of shutting down because it's in a, a future where high school's like not really a thing anymore and everyone just doesn't take it seriously and she tries okay. to have the most fun high school ever and then the last episode is like all the characters are graduating and they're all talking about what they're going to do in the future and you know like most of them have plans except Manabi and she's like I'm just going to become a, a freeder which just means like go around and get random part-time jobs and just do whatever and everyone's like what how can you how is that possible because you could do anything you're such a great leader you did all this stuff over the course of the show and she's like you know i could be happy doing anything so i'm just gonna go do whatever i want and like i was about to start uh like taking all these advanced classes in school and i was trying to like fast track myself to do like some kind of successful collegiate career you know like thinking oh i really gotta succeed in school if i ever want to make anything of myself and then i see manabi like just yeah i can be happy doing whatever i'm gonna be a freeder and i was like ah ah!" and i had just a total mental fucking breakdown that night and like just cried all night long and couldn't like just trying to figure out what i was gonna do with my future incidentally 11th grade miserable everyone's heard about it probably on the depression podcast (laughs) or on my let's play show very bad year but yeah manabi incited a total breakdown that's that's really interesting to me because I, uh, when I was in high school, I sort was sort of in a similar way. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I insisted. My ego demanded that I take, even <coughs> even the valedictorian didn't do this, but I took every single AP class that was offered, and That's like I, psychotic, it, it was really dumb. <laughs> but I I passed them all, but I got like. B's and C's for the most mm. part because I, I didn't actually care about them nor did I care about what they would do for me I was only interested in like proving to everyone how smart I was and in the end like I got worse grades than most people or you know like the, the yeah. higher level people so it was it entirely shot myself in the foot for no reason uh, and it wasn't even you know to accomplish anything other than satisfying my own ego so yeah it was just a big waste of time to do shit like that do and you- living, living your life like her and like she just wants to be happy. You know, you, you don't need all this extra bullshit. This, this is kind of yeah. tying into the whole school thing. You don't need these yeah, diplomas. Go listen to Procrastinators. Ask, ask Kanye. School sucks. I was going to say, uh, go listen to uh, fucking uh, the college dropout right. and, uh, and shit. Um, my well, degrees we're... are going to keep me warm. My dad gave me all his degrees, and I wear them on my clothing, and I feel so good about them. And I'm going to get more degrees so I can get more degrees, and it's just going to make right, me the they, happiest person they, in the world. Got it. School, go right, watch the school right. one. Does anybody have examples <laughs> of shit that made them break down crying? I have a lot me? of examples, man. Let me tell you people about the, the, probably like the thing that has like the, the highest – the piece of media that has the highest ratio of moments – that utterly destroy me and, and turn me into like a bawling, sobbing mess. It's the Rocky series. Mm. Oh, cool. Just that fucking. Adrian! Oh my god. <laughs> that fucking whole series is so emotional. And that score, the music, if I hear like one note of like the music from those movies, not the ones that everyone. Not, not, not like the. the <laughs> yeah, not that. But I mean like. There's, yeah. this, there's this piece of music that plays in Rocky every time something sad happens. And every time I fucking even think of it, if I just like try to picture the notes in my head, I'll start crying at notes. There's so many parts, the whole fucking saga, because it's the, it's, it's the greatest it's the greatest saga in the history of fiction. It tells it, yeah. it's the it's just like a guy's entire life story. It's it's just like 30 40 years yeah. in a dude's life. He like he starts out he's 30 in the first movie and in the most recent movie Creed he's like 70. And you're just and you're just seeing this guy get older and all of his like triumphs and his trials and tribulations, everything he gains and everything he loses, and it's like the most real human saga that was ever put to film in the history of mankind. That that fucking you know the 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 first movie when he's 
when he's, you know, he's all pissed off, you know, because uh, Mickey is grilling him about what a bum he's become and how he's never amounted anything, and he's just getting pissed off, and he's like, I know it stinks! You think I don't know it stinks in here? You think I don't know I'm in a dump? I ain't never amounted nothing in And he's like punching the wall, and yeah, I feel it. I feel it so hard. That frustration of not accomplishing what you want to accomplish in your life, of looking at yourself and hating yourself and being a bum. Especially, especially then, because Mickey was the one who had kind of ignored him up to yeah. that point, and only now is Mickey yeah, into Yeah, and him. like, yeah. there's that scene that where he's like, hey, hey, Mickey, why are you always pushing me? Yo, why are you always, you know, you know, why are you always yelling at me? And, and Mickey's like, you know why I hate you, Rock? Because you had something. You could have been somebody, but you didn't. You ended up breaking thumbs for some two-bit mob boss. And, and Rocky's like, uh, 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 the whole movie is just, uh, 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 and I'm watching it going, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> me too, and, man. <laughs> and he fucking, and then there's that part in Rocky 3. <laughs> where Mickey dies, and Mickey's, you know, yes, it, it's after yeah. he fucking, he, he, because, because Rocky wasn't listening to Mickey, he had to fight Clubber Lang, and, and Mickey kept telling him, ah, Rock, this guy's gonna clobber ya, he's gonna kick your ass unless you take it seriously, and, and Rocky was getting all full of himself, because he was a champion, and he was like, ah, well, you know, I'll just, I'll just, you know, train in this high-tech gym, I'll take a, I'll take a selfie with these fans, and, you know, I don't really give a shit, <laughs> and then he goes, and he goes, and, and, like, right before the fight, you know, Clubber Lang, like, pushes Mickey. And then they have the fight. And Clubber Lang just kicks the shit out of Rocky. He beats the shit out of him. And Rocky loses the fight. And it's this humbling experience. And, and he realizes, you know, you know, I should have listened to Mick. Mick was right. But then he finds out that Mick's, like, in the in the locker room having a heart attack and dying. And he runs to Mick. And, and Mick's dying. And he's sitting there and he's crying. He's like, Mick! Mick, don't go! <laughs> you can't even understand what the fuck he's saying because he's fucking Sylvester Stallone and he has too many emotions. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone yes. has the same thing that I have. He has too many emotions, <laughs> and he's got a half-paralyzed face, and it's this perfect <clears throat> concoction that makes him the greatest actor of all time, and it makes him, you know, the... the <laughs> like, something about <laughs> Sylvester Stallone has the ability to convey emotion on a level, on, on, a, on a grand scale, beyond what any other person in the history of mankind is capable of, and, I, and it connects mm. with me, and I feel I have a, I have a spirit bond with Sylvester Stallone and when I see him sad I get sad and I feel everything he's feeling and 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 mix and mix like Oh, did you do it, Rock? Did you win the fight? Did you win the fight? And he goes, yeah, we won. He's lying to Mick. He's telling him he won the fight. And then Mick dies, and it's the saddest fucking thing ever. And then in Rocky IV, when Apollo Creed dies, he gets killed by Ivan Drago. And, and you know, and, and Rocky, he, you know, he has, he's, he's going to throw in the towel. He's going to throw in the towel for, for Apollo. And Apollo looks at Rocky, you know, Apollo, his old enemy, who's become his friend through the years. Because they've, they've had so many battles with each other that, that, that they're like, they're, they're the original Goku and Vegeta. It's, it's Apollo and Rocky, and, and you know oh they're friends God. now. And and, he, and he's watching this fight. He's watching Apollo Creed get his ass kicked by this fucking Russian Superman super villain Ivan Drago. And he's got the towel, and he's like, hey, I gotta throw in the towel, Apollo! And Apollo's wife is there, and, and his wife is like, Come on, Rocky, throw in the towel! What the fuck? And Apollo looks at Rocky, and he's like, Don't you throw in that towel, man! Don't you do it, man! And he's got too much pride. He's got that warrior pride. He won't let Rocky throw yeah. in the towel. And then Apollo goes down, and he dies! Fucking Ivan Drago just punches him to death! And he dies in the ring, and 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 Rocky finally throws in the towel, but it's too late. Apollo's dead, and then he has, then he goes to Apollo's funeral, and he's like, hey, you know, you know, uh, Apollo always did things his way. <laughs> and then. And then you get to Rocky V, and it's like the worst movie ever. Rocky V is such a, it's a piece of <laughs> shit. Nobody likes it. It's, it's, the, it's the bad one. He's, there's this guy called Tommy Gunn. But even in the bad one, there's great scenes that make you cry. There's that fucking part, you know, because Rocky can't fight anymore. He's got brain damage from all the punching he's, he's had. If he gets punched anymore, he'll die. So he can't, he can't box anymore. But he's trying to relive his glory. He's trying to train this up-and-comer, Tommy Gunn. And Tommy Gunn is a huge dick, and he's taking advantage of Rocky's kindness. And he's going off with this other promoter, and he's just being an idiot. 
And, and everyone knows it. And everyone can see it but Rocky, but Rocky doesn't want to see it because it's all he has left. It's all he has left. He just has to, to train this guy and so he can live vicariously through Tommy Gunn's success. So he's fucking trying to fight him, and Adrian's yelling at him. She's going, God damn it, Rocky! Don't you see? You fucking... He's taking advantage of you! And Rocky's like, God damn it, Adrian! What do you think? I'm stupid! I know! <laughs> and, he's, and, and, they have the, and then there's just the fucking... There's that part where, where Rocky has that flashback. He's, he's got a flashback to, like, to where he was younger, training with Mick. And Mick, he gives him this, uh... This uh, little crucifix. No, not a crucifix. It's golden gloves. It's, it's silver gloves from like some boxing thing. He's like, I don't even remember what the fuck it is. But he's like, hey, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Ro- Rocky Marciano gave me this back in the day, and now I'm giving it to you, Rock. And and Whoa. and 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 so and so Rocky's remembering Mick, his 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 dead mentor, Mick. And in this flashback, Mick is giving him this speech, like, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, Rocco. Uh, sometimes when you get older. I, uh, I think nature is smarter than us, Rock. I think we get older, and everyone around us that we love, they all die, Rocky. And and you look around, and you ain't got no one left. And you says to yourself, what am I still doing here, Rock? And and then and then so I want you to have this. I want you to have this. And and and, and I, when you look at it, I want you to hear my voice. And it's gonna be saying, get up, you son of a bitch, cause Mickey loves ya! And then at the end of the movie, where he has a street fight with Tommy Gunn, and Tommy Gunn is beating him up because he's got brain damage, he can't fight anymore, he's getting headaches and, like, migraines in the middle of his fucking fight. And Tommy Gunn, he, Tommy Gunn beats up Pauly, he beats up everyone, and, but, so, so, so Rocky's down, and, but then he, he has that flashback, and he remembers the voice of his old mentor, Mick. Get up, you son of a bitch, cause Mickey loves ya! And he gets up and he punches the guy! He punches him with his fucking feet and fists! He punches him with his feet! He doesn't care! He's out of control! He's this is a street fight, there's no rules in a street fight you can punch with your feet! And then, you get to Rocky Six. Rocky Balboa, where he's old as fuck and he can't even fight anymore, and the boxing commission won't even let him box anymore because he's a fucking dinosaur. He's a thousand years old. Yeah. And, they say, and he has to go before, like, the tribunal of boxing the old wise men who control the boxing industry. And he's, and he's got to, like, plead his case. And he's like, hey, yo, you know, don't you guys ever have something that you always wanted to do that you never wanted to do? And you feel like you your last chance to do it. And they're like, oh, god damn it, Rocky, you've moved us to tears. We're going to let you fight. Even though you're, a, even though you're a fucking ancient wizard, and your bones are as brittle as fucking as as cookies, a Santa Claus cookies, and what the fuck? Merry Christmas, everyone! And then he has... <laughs> it is a Merry Christmas. It is a Merry Christmas. He fought Ivan Drago on Christmas Day. That's right. Russia. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> to see Prime and Drago on Christmas Day to save us all from sin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And in the last movie, Adrian's dead. And, and, and he fucking, you know, he talks to, to Polly. There's that scene. It's not even in the movie. It's a deleted scene. And even the deleted scenes are, are an emotional fucking uh, maelstrom. <sighs> Where he's talking to Polly, and Polly's talking about Adrian. He's like, "Oh, Rock! Oh, oh! You treated a good Rock. I treated a bad. I don't want to remember." And then he's, "Oh, fucking Rocky!" And then there's the fucking the new movie where he's he gets replaced by a black, and that's the saddest part of all. <laughs> where, where now you have to watch a bunch of movies with some black guy, and Rocky's probably gonna be dead in the next one. Rocky gets cancer in Creed. He gets cancer, oh, and is, and he has to fight cancer. You know, he's fought Ivan. Dr- <laughs> He's battled Apollo Creed, but now he has to battle his strongest boxing opponent of all, Cancer. And he and it's it's a beautiful saga, and that's my favorite. And not even just Rocky, also Rambo! The Rambo series. Sylvester Stallone is a fucking machine for emotion. He's an emotional yeah. fucking It's not good enough for him to make one to make the be- the just the one most emotional <laughs> fucking journey of all time. He had to he had to make Rambo at the same time. All the Rambo movies are amazing. The first fucking Rambo movie at the end where like he he breaks down and he's talking about, you know, 
how how sad he is and how he's got this PTSD. And then the second movie where he meets he meets Ko and and he falls in love and she teaches him that he's not expendable. But then at the end of the movie, you know, he he says, "Buddha, I'm coming for you," because he found out the government used him. They used him again. They don't care about the soldiers. They just use you up and they throw you away. They just, and right. then in the third movie, it, it, uh, 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 the third movie is not very good. But then in the fourth Rambo movie, <laughs> the fourth Rambo movie is he finally goes home to his family at the end. It is all also another thing. And speaking of how the government, they don't care about the soldiers. The Metal Gear Solid. The fucking... <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Ah. Metal Gear. You are my best friend. Have no fear. I am your godsend. If I had to choose between Meryl and Metal Gear, Meryl would lose. Three cheers for Metal Gear. <laughs> Yeah, Metal Gear's a but good one. But it's I my duty to kick some real booty, beat down the baddies. Metal what Gear. What the hell is this uh, song? Uh, that's my, that's, that's that's my Metal Gear dun, song dun, 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 dun. That, I've, that I've been singing for years and never told anyone about. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I that's what I sing to myself. I scream sing that to myself to ward off the tears so they don't overtake yeah. me. <laughs> Whenever I have an wow. emotion, I start thinking about the Metal Gear song. But it reminds me of Metal Gear and makes me cry even harder, so it's a worthless song. <laughs> Sensible strategy. Oh my god, the fucking part in Metal Gear Solid uh, where Sniper Wolf dies, and she's talking oh, about yeah. That's like, oh man, that's a beautiful thing. You, we're dogs of war, but you, oh. you're a wolf. Ugh, you're a wolf. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. I love your handkerchief, it smells so when good. Fucking, when, when Liquid Snake is, is killing Grey Fox... And he's like, in the Middle East, oh, no. we don't hunt foxes, we hunt jackals! And Gray Fox is like, I can't get foxes more dangerous than a jackal, you cupsucker! And he shoots oh, at him, man. and then he dies, and then he gives that speech, and he's like, Snake, we're not tools of the government or anyone else. You gotta fucking get up, and you gotta get a boner, and you gotta fuck the world oh, by your own God. standards. How how beautiful was it that, that Snake took that message to heart and started philanthropy with Otacon yes. to fight against ah! the evil corporations trying to fucking... Kill us with machines. Oh yeah. God, we're, man! We're remember when? Remember when Tommy Wiseau shot himself at the end of the room? <laughs> <laughs> that, ah, you all betrayed me. That was fucking point, poignant. Now it was so I, I it's so sad. You have to laugh. Time. It's too sad for tears. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You can't. Ah <laughs> oh, God. It, I, my favorite parts were the. Sh Is he dead? Is he dead? He's got a <laughs> fucking bullet in his brain, <laughs> you dumb dead? bitch! What do you think? <laughs> R remember when that? Remember in the party scene when that guy shows up and just starts chastising the girlfriend and the lover yes. as though he's been there all along, even I though love no one's so ever much. seen him before. I, I think that he's the doctor recast inexplicably, but yeah. I just love it so much. It's I don't want him to be the same guy. I want him to be a new man. I think he's just a stranger that showed up to fucking moralize at these people. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just goes from party to party looking for people to preach at. The room is the greatest piece of oh, man. art ever conceived. You mentioned like, this anyway, is gonna yeah. totally mess up our circle of friends. I'm so I'm yeah. sorry, who I'm sorry, who, who are, are you? Who are you? <laughs> have, who have, are I, you? Have, I, have we met, sir? <laughs> That's the perfect line for that character. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. Our our circle of friends. You know, you know our well-established <laughs> circle of friends that we have. Oh my god. Um, well, I'll uh, tell you what's shit. a what's a tearjerker. Another one. <laughs> yeah. Since you mentioned the Doctor, man, good old Doctor oh Who. Oh boy. Every fucking every season of Doctor Who, like every four episodes, there's there's got to be one that just that just wrecks everybody. It's the, the, the Doctor is such a great man. He's such an emotional oh, hero. Oh shit! He's a I remember that there's another time I cried. It was it was when Rose got trapped in the, the alternate dimension. Yeah. Oh, With that no. cool music playing. That was that was really big. Oh man. Yeah, it was. It was. I thought it was an odd choice to go. Hey, now you're an all star. Get your game on. Uh, go. But it play. works so well. It works. It really works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good Shrek cameo. Good good cameo. <laughs> um, you know, uh, to to shift gears a little bit. Um, wait. I just was... want to say. Um, you okay. know, what movie wasn't that sad. Was that? Grave of the Fireflies. I agree. Um, because, well, I mean, sad. it would have uh, been sad, except that it didn't make any sense why she died. She died because the dude had too much pride. He wouldn't go like, ask for food. He let like, his sister die. Yeah, but like, that's, that's fucking sucks. The, the very day, no, like, like he, the kid had money, right? Like, he had money in the bank. And then the girl starves, like, almost to death. 
And then on the day that she dies, that's when he decides to go and maybe get some of the money that he has out and buy some food. Like um, what? Are you are, are you I, fucking kidding me? I think me? food wasn't available. I don't I don't know. I don't, Whatever. I don't okay, we get exactly it. this I, detail. I, I, was, but I don't. I, well, I don't. I, I don't even understand. Like like the day that she is too far gone. To, that she will die from starvation. I that don't, why, why day, did he steal food he gets if he had money. money? I don't. I don't get it. Like he yeah, stole like, food. Like that but... very day, he has money and buys her some food, and she can't eat it because like for she's me the, already did. the thing about Grave of the Fireflies, it. I'll extend this to a lot of stuff like it. That like, I feel like what is meant to make that movie sad is the realization that it's that it's like real, and this is all like real things that happen to real yeah. people and stuff like that. But. I don't feel like as a movie, and maybe this this is something that's hard to say without feeling like I'm some kind of inhuman jackass or something, but it's like, I already know that people are suffering everywhere. I kind of take it for granted that everyone, that life is terrible and everyone's suffering forever at all times, and, and children are dying en masse uh, everywhere. And so, like... For if if you want to actually make me feel something, then the movie has to like actually have characters I care about. And Grave of the Fireflies, I, I don't connect with anything. Like the characters are all assholes. Everyone in the movie is an asshole. And the, like the little sister is not an asshole. All yeah, right? She's just and that's a the fucking one who kid. Dies, though so you're she's, supposed to cry. She's she has she has no personality. She's just some kid. You know, oh, it's like yeah, some kid blob. died. I mean, that she's is sad. A true but... Moe blob. Speaking of yeah. movies that totally tried and just completely failed to make me like connect to characters and like feel something about what was going. On. Um, Song of the Sea was like so. Oh, I didn't like, see that yet. It's mm-hmm. so emotionally. I don't know, like, it, it it strives for this big fucking grand vision, and there's this big emotional scene at the end where, oh, the girl, or, like, the, the mom has to, like, take the, like, she wants to take the daughter to, like, the spirit realm, and, oh, the spirits, all the spirits have awakened, and they go back to the spirit realm, and, oh, the mom is in the spirit <laughs> realm, and, oh, the daughter's gotta go to the spirit <clears throat> realm, but... Mm-hmm. Um, it sucks. It's fucking gay, and it sucks. You, you know, that's interesting, uh, because the, the, the one they <laughs> made before I, that's that... That's basically all I have to say. The, the one um, they, they made the, before the, the, that... The studio's, okay. the studio's previous movie, Secret of Kells. Secret of Kells. It, it's yeah. not... It's not... It doesn't... It's not as tear-jerky, but it, it's... It's... I don't know. It's just an infinitely better movie. I fucking hate Song of the Sea. Not because it's terrible, just because it's so oh, much worse than Secret of Kells. Gosh. Secret of Kells, I consider to have one of the worst endings I've ever seen in a what movie. What the fuck are you talking about? Everything I, about that movie was perfect. Hold on. We, we, we do not let this before. devolve into an argument about Secret right, of Kells. All I was going to say... I, I, ju- I just want to All I was going to say this, was that I... I well, whatever. I, I think the ending with, like, the book, it, it, it wasn't satisfying no, to me. No, the ending was great. Stop. Stop. It was Okay, but that's not what I wanted to say. I was just when I was watching the anime show was. I don't care what you wanted what does that have to do with crying is it gonna yeah involve yeah it does cry? okay yeah, yeah, go okay, ahead okay, okay. okay it's just it's it's in secret of kells uh like uh i don't know the sequel apparently failed according to ben i, I want to see it but in the first it's one a sequel. i, I uh, think i think i actually movie. might have Whatever. cried a little bit at the ending of secret of kells so there fuck fuck you buddy oh, okay all right yeah, fine good but for me the what i what i did like about uh the end of secret of kells is the relationship between the boy and that silver-haired girl father whose name i forget yeah father aiden Father. No, no, not him. Um, I'm talking about the girl in the woods and the kid, oh, Brandon Ashley. or whatever. It, it's like Ashley. It's like a weird spelling, it's, but whatever. It's spelled uh, Isling, but it's pronounced Ashley. That's right. It's a weird Celtic thing. Anyway, uh, just their relationship and the way he like leaves and you don't know what happened to her for like decades, and then at the end he sees her years and years later, briefly, and it just there's just like a there's like a sad lost I, friendship there that, that really I, got to me. That was the I, one emotional thing. I liked Father I really Aiden liked a lot. That. I liked Father Aiden more than I liked Isling. But mm-hmm. whatever, yeah, it's great. It's great. Right. It's a great fucking movie. And Song of the Sea just is just right. fucking empty in comparison. In all right, I'm gonna try opinion. to I'm gonna try to go through these as fast as I possibly can. Okay, okay, please go. I'm gonna go through all the animes that made me cry. I have a list of the exact tears I've shed during Jesus each Christ. show. So Do the you keep first... them in a little jar. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, I, I well, I actually made I made a post about this back in 2009, and I'm looking Dude. at the post right now so I can keep track of you know the older ones from back in the day. Cool. So, all right, the first tear I ever shed watching anime, apparently, according to this list, is from the anime series Canon, which is this uh, mm-hmm. sad girls moe show where everyone fucking dies. The part that makes me cry is that the, the like the main character uh. is staying with his cousin and her mom, and her mom gets hit by a car in like episode 22, and she's just like this cool side character who's just a super lovely mom who's uh, awesome and she's the best mom ever and she gets hit by a fucking car she doesn't die but there's like a, a scene where her daughter is like all emotional over it and uh, got one tear out of me uh, right, tear number tier. two okay. <laughs> tier you've, number got, two. you've got tears of tears 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Tier number two, the ending of Eureka 7. Holy yeah, shit. that's a good one. It's so fucking beautiful. And, and tier number five, which we're, we're skipping to because it was also from the last ep- No, the, the previous episode of Rank of Seven. The last two episodes have made me cry, but on different times watching the show. Um, because the second to last episode is about the end of the relationship between Anemone and Dominic. And it's like, Anemone is this girl who's been this total bitch through the whole show. She's this evil, cruel motherfucker. But this guy yeah. Dominic's like in love with her and obsessed with her. And she doesn't appreciate it at all. She's just this entitled brat through the whole show. But then in, like, the last arc, like, things stop going her way and, like, everything just fucking dogpiles on her and all this bullshit happens. But then Dominic's there for her and she realizes that, you know, what he's been doing all this time and she finally appreciates that how his love for her and they have this fucking beautiful scene where they're falling through the air and they, they fucking embrace in midair. It's beautiful. Made me cry. Then in Dude. the last episode when Renton and Eureka finally, you know have their big payoff like they they i mean they're already kind of like a couple by this point but that's the fucking opening theme it doesn't play at the end of the show the 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 whole last episode has this 10 minute song called niji which means rainbow by denki groove that plays like the whole last 10 minutes of the uh of the of the episode that was an insane bit that was so odd that was like a speed racer ending he fucking goes god mode and Save his bitch. It's a little rushed, but it is beautiful <laughs> nonetheless. I'm sure he would describe it. <laughs> as, as a pimp, he needed to reclaim his property, and he did it. Um, anyways, tears numbers three and four were apparently shed during F, A Tale of Memories. I don't remember what scene, because it doesn't list here what scene made me cry. So I, I just know that oh, happened no. during that what show. What a shitty list this uh, is. <laughs> yeah. And then it says, uh, th- this the last entry on the list is tears number six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nose run number one, and choke up number one. Oh, all Jesus happened Christ. at once while How watching... This, uh, list? this is the last one on the list. Uh, oh, okay. All happened okay, at once while good. watching Clannad. Uh, episode nine of Clannad. <laughs> yes, Clannad, the crab with testicles. That's <laughs> that right. We all know and love. <laughs> <laughs> In episode 9 of Clannad, then there's this girl called Fuko. She's like this little girl who it turns out is a ghost. Holy shit, the crab with testicles! I remember yeah, the that's, crab with testicles! That's right. Yeah. yeah! Good job, Jesse, yeah. you did it! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> we did it! It was your own joke! <laughs> so we fucking did it for you guys! I, I, so what I happened have, to the crab, did you? Over oh, the man. years, I have received... I have multiple times received like fan art of the what people imagine the clanad is, like the crab with testicles. Um, so what happens to this crab ghost? Well, I'm, okay, I'm it's ready. not a crab. It's just a little girl. She's a ghost. All right, that's, that's and, your story. What do you mean uh, it's not a crab? <laughs> all this time. <laughs> well, anyways, the little girl, like she, she just like her sister's getting married, and she just wants to be able to like see the wedding, uh, and she'll be able to pass on to the next life. Aww. And so in episode nine, there's like they do the whole wedding scene. It's just, it's just so. Like, the way they directed it and animated it and everything is just so fucking emotionally, you know, manipulative that it, sure. it was a huge... It made me cry like crazy, even though I didn't care about the character or anything about the show. It's not even a good you know, show. That, that sounds, that sounds almost as good. That sounds almost as good and similarly emotionally resonant as this uh, this one hentai I watched about a ghost <laughs> who couldn't go... She couldn't pass on until she got fucked real good by one dude, and then she did, and she she felt at peace. It was great. It I was bet great. I've seen that. So, to, to just follow have. up, because that list was from 2009, I've had a few more times I cried. Another big one was another show from the same guy who wrote Canon and uh, and Clannad, which was Angel Beats. The last episode of Angel Beats, because... Oh my god, that one's so fucking emotional. Because the whole show takes place in purgatory, and it's like all these fucking kids who are like trying to figure out why they're there and like how to move on. And then the last episode, it's like most of the whole cast has already moved on from purgatory. There's just like five characters left, and they've basically resolved all their major issues, and they're just like having like one last like uh like goodbye they they literally stage a graduation they all meet up in like the auditorium of the the purgatory that is high school and they mm. uh they, they each of them one at a time gets up and like gives their graduation speech and it's all fucking emotional and they you know they vanish after they give their speech so it's like you're literally watching the characters one by one exit the show to go to heaven oh my god oh. it's so fucking emotional um <laughs> That's a, that one definitely made me break down really fucking hard. Um, and then some more recent ones. Uh, the, the most recent time that I cried, apropos of nothing, was watching k and thinking about Hypocrite. Because it was, it was after we had... I, I've probably told this story before, but uh, at least to you guys. It was mm. after we had met up at BronyCon in 2014. 14 I guess. And it was like mm. everyone got to go except for Hippo. Yeah, no, 2013 yeah. then. No. 
yeah, 14, yeah. whatever. In 2014, 14, right everyone now. met up. We all went to BronyCon except for Hippo. Uh, and it was like, I realized because we had this, we made up these little memes and stuff while we were at BronyCon, which have still survived with us to this day, like the Lord of Shit Mountain. Little things that we were just giggling about Double like Batman. all night long. Yeah. And mm. uh, Double Batman was the next year, I think. That was the year Hippo was there. So, was it? Yeah. Oh, shit, Lord of right, Shit Mountain right. was the first year, though. And like we just kept like all night staying up, like saying, <laughs> Shit Mountain. And then we'd all giggle <laughs> for like 10 fucking minutes because we're <laughs> idiots. Um, but we had all these memes and stuff, and it really reminded me of the scene in K-On! where they go on the school trip, and uh, they're all just, like, laying in bed at night, and they keep going, like, like a bean, and then they all laugh, and then one of them's like, shed it go and they all laugh, and it, it, they, then it comes up later in the show, and, like, during the most emotional moment in the show, in episode 20, when, like, the band has just done their last performance, and they're about to, like, you know, this is the last time that they're ever gonna do something major together again, and they all just break down crying at the realization, and then, like, Ritsu, to try to cheer everyone up, says, like a bean, and they all start laughing while crying, and oh my god, that scene absolutely makes me cry every single fucking time I watch it. Um, <laughs> as does the ending of season one now. Basically all of K-On! makes me cry now, because the more I think about it, the more emotional I get about it. But this, the scene that, that got to me out of nowhere was because, you know, I, I made that connection more like between us and... like on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, true. Like, you know, I made that connection between us <laughs> taking out and, and that scene. But then... I'm watching the show, and I'm halfway through season one, and Azusa shows up, who's, you know, the, the youngest fifth member who joins the crew later, and I suddenly, like, upon seeing her, I suddenly remember that in that episode where they were on the school trip, she wasn't there because she's a grade lower. They all went to Kyoto, and they had this great time, but meanwhile, she was stuck back at home, and she was just hanging out with her, like, underclassmen friends, and so she had this other sort of adventure that was going on with her friends, and she, you know, has her own little stories from that, but it's obviously obviously less interesting um and hippo at the time had been at this like uh like this camp for retarded kids i guess and he cleaned shit for <laughs> retarded kids or something yep and uh <laughs> yeah and he had been doing that and like he had said you know it was it was a it was a good time on its own but you know it was not the same trip that the rest of us were on and like i remembered all of that when i saw azusa and i was like oh my god it's the same and then i just fucking lost it and i was crying like all day i all i could think about and i was just like like babbling to myself oh my god hypocrites azunyan it's so okay it's perfect dude. um and it, it didn't help that i think the reason i was so emotional is that i was like hopped up on painkillers because this was after i'd broken my foot so i'm like laying oh, yeah. i'm like laying in a chair watching Kaon like half half asleep, like, just downing Oxycontin and crying my eyes out thinking about Azusa. Uh, and then, yeah, and then I cried at, like, every major episode from then on. Um, and then Kaon became my favorite anime of all time, officially. Interesting. Interesting. I've, I have, uh, I've heard some, that story a whole bunch of, a, of dang times. I think I yeah. cried at the end of Shirobako, too. I don't know if I shed a whole tear, but the scene where... Oh, the, I hope you. Does anybody care if they get spoiled for Shirobako? Is anybody? I not, do care. I've I don't want it. to be spoiled. Though you, it's been a long time, so I wouldn't really. You haven't fucking seen it, you it. nerd. I am working on it. I got a lot of uh, shit to do. Uh, I want to talk about it though. Do you? Uh, can you cover your ears for like one minute while I freak out? <laughs> yes. Yes, I can. I'm gonna take off my headphones. Go okay. Ahead. So at the end of Shirobako. Uh, like, the whole show, the five girls have all wanted to work on an anime together. Like, that was their dream when they were in high school. They had an anime club, they all wanted to work together on this one show, and then they, they've they never gotten the chance because th they've all gone to different jobs and they're, they're all in different places in their career. Some of them are having a lot of success, some aren't. And the voice actress girl, the whole show is just getting shit on. She never gets work the whole fucking show. She never has any success. And in the second half of the show, all four of the other girls get to work on this show together in some capacity. And like, they have to have meetups with the other girl. Like they're all hanging out, and they're all like, "Oh yeah, we, you know, we're kind of on the show too." And you know, the voice actress girl's just like, "Yeah, I, I understand. You know, it's it's hard out there for a voice actress." And they're just like beating down onto the whole show. But then they like the whole second half, they're like talking about rewriting the script for the show. And then it turns out that they end up writing rewriting the last scene of the last episode where they're going to have them go to this like a. Uh, 
to meet one of the main characters in the show they're making to meet one of her like her little sister and so the voice actress girl ends up getting to voice the little sister and they all like find out at once and like they bring her in and she gives this really emotional performance and she's like crying because she got to be in the show with are all her good? friends are you, are you done no i'm are still going done? and okay, then right, the right, fucking right. emma who's the animator I she gets to animate Emma gets to animate the scene that she was voice acting. Shut up. Jesse got to go on for 15 fucking minutes about Rocky. I can talk oh, about you. Yeah, he, he, he used up all the fucking goodwill. He used up all the goodwill I have. Ben, you have had no contribution to this so far. So I'm going to talk and about Shirobako. My contributions have been concise and pointed. <laughs> they had nothing to do with crying and shows. I've fucking seen Shirobako, okay? Yeah, it's a really I've emotional it, scene. Man. It Don't makes fucking you, watch it Shirobako, made me cry audience. When, e when okay, Emma is like animating the scene that, that she point. got to do, then that was it, extremely it's fucking ending. emotional. It's a, it's a, good, it's a good ending. Like, I didn't, I didn't cry, but right. it was good. You're good. I wanted um, to say, um, there's a, the the ending of Lucky Star was always quite emotional. That for me is a good one. It's uh, it was really just that that idea that it's the end of school and you know all the friends they've made and all the stuff they've done. Yeah. That's it. After that, everyone's yes. gonna go away and never speak to each other again. That's also um, a genius ending. Because and it, it, all, and it, yeah. it really, it, it really makes me think. I mean, I think I cry most when it's like an, an idea or a concept that I can closely relate to, like yeah. a character dying. I've never seen somebody die in, in front of me, so that never really affects me that much. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you know, the Lion King. I can't really relate to that because I, I'm not a lion, and also. <laughs> I've, and I'm not bit, African, I'm so I can't yeah. double relate. Yeah. Lion. Lions <laughs> attack hippos. Yeah. I can't relate That's to that. That's true. It's no exactly. empathy. But um, I was thinking, like, if there was something like one of my worst fears, well, not, not one, of, one of my worst fears, but if there was, like, a, a character death from the perspective of somebody who just didn't know, because I've had nightmares, or rather just, like, I've wakened, I've, 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 I've cried in my sleep to, to the idea of just coming home one day, and then, uh, like, my brothers or my parents just not coming home because they died. Yeah. And I just didn't find out about it. And if, if that was in, like, a TV show, I would cry probably there. But, like, things mm -hmm. where it's, like, all dramatic and there's music and there's, like, oh, no, he's dead, you know. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Hippo, you're I bringing just, a tear I... to my eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just, I can't, I can't relate to things like that and I don't cry so much. So if, it happened, if it's sense. happened to me or if it's something I fear... Uh, and I would cry more. Go back to Lucky Star. Uh, that scene where they like reminisce about Konata's dead mom. That's yeah, pretty I was emotional. Gonna say. And the funny thing about that ending of K or of a Lucky Star that you described, that like it's all of them graduating and like this sort of emotional thing, is that it always works, and yet every single one of those shows has done it. Like Lucky yeah, Star right, has that. Right. Uh, Hidamari sketch has elements of that. Azumanga like Daio like that. ends that way. Uh, Kon ends that way. Obviously, there's no other way high school really slice of life can end. It's Manabi so perfect. It's, yeah, it's it's not even that I had a good high school experience. It's just that I was starting yeah. to make one or two friends at the end of high school, and I was like, oh, I have to start right. again. Well, I'm not and knocking. So basically, the, I'm saying like even though they all do it, it always works. Like every single oh, yeah. one of those is an right. emotional ending. Even when the show wasn't like you know, Azumanga Daio has like a surprisingly emotional climax for a show that was never emotional. You know, it's kind of hard to avoid being emotional when like it's the end of you and all your buddies. Like you reading it, you, they're like your friends. You know, Tomo yeah. Yeah. and the well, like because my my friends in high school like any of the ones i kept talking to after high school like by that point we didn't see each other in school anymore we only saw each other outside school because like mm -hmm. most of them yeah. are people because in japan they stay in one class typically for like three you know you, you have a lot of the same people especially if you're in the same grade range you know and of yeah. course anime will you know skew it so everyone ends up in the same class um or they're all in the same club or something but you know for me and my friends it was like by senior year nobody was in classes with me or half of them had dropped out so you know hey uh, before we move on from lucky star ask... let me just say how genius that ending is in that the the whole like performance that they're putting on is the opening that we've seen every episode yeah. fucking genius love it um I just want to ask about the school system in America. I don't really know how it works. Do you All have, right. like, a, a class of people that uh, you stay with throughout the school time, or is it just... Like classes no, it's, based on it's all just based on you. You move Cause, between cause classes in, in every, the U every in the UK. Hour. We have like tutor groups, or at least my school had tutor groups, where it would be a group of people, and we had a name, and we stayed in that class the whole way through. But when we get into different subjects, we ha we would be in different classes. 
Like if we chose German, we'd be all with all the. It, it changes German. every year. In, you in get high a new school, homeroom. You, you have year. a homeroom, but yeah, like you don't stay with them through the day. Yeah, yeah, it's just like where you go. I in mean, the it's it's okay. almost, uh, it's almost completely because like I remember in in. Uh, I mean, in elementary school, we were in one class the whole time. In middle school, I remember mm -hmm. homeroom meaning something. But, like, in high school, for me, it was just homeroom was just whatever your first class was. Like, there was no – we didn't go to a homeroom, homeroom every period day. Homeroom was totally pointless, and I never understood why they well, even bothered. Well, did you guys have an A and B – did you guys have A, a and B days? Like – we had like A B. C. What, what we had mean? like a six day cycle, I think. In Holy our shit! High how the fuck does that I mean, work? I, I don't know. Yeah, don't yeah, know, we no did. Idea. I mean, for no, my no, school, no, it was you took day. four classes on one day and then four classes the next day, and they were all totally different. So you did not go to the same room at all two days in a row. So the thing that's that's remember. different about uh, the UK is that um, we have like middle school, uh, middle school and high school combined into one, and then also a few years added on at the end. Mm -hmm. So if you were to go start at, like, year 7 and you would go to, through to year 12 or 13, you would be with that one homeroom or tutor group for many years. Oh. And it, yeah, it's, nothing it's, like that here. It, it feels kind of similar to the way Japanese things happen. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Uh, but, hey, I wanted way. to kind of bring things in a different direction. If, if Are you done, Gib? Did, were you anything else yeah, you were yeah. going to say? Okay. I'm done. Uh, I was just going to ask about, and this might be something interesting uh, to talk about from a from a crying perspective, specifically since we're all content creators. I don't know about you guys, but I've on many occasions, well, I guess not many, but on several occasions, stuff that I have been making has made me cry, kind of on an oh intellectual level, as I just <laughs> realized. Some, well, it's I, maybe it's because like I'm I've so I have such a penchant to where, use where I like, thought you were going music. with that is I thought you were going to say I've got lots of comments that have said they cried watching my videos. I was not no, expecting no, who you cares yourself about them? to. I, I don't care about them. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean, the comments too. People do say okay. that. I've, I've okay. not cried at my own videos. I, I never. Have, I have never. I mean, I have gotten really emotional in various ways about my own stuff. I've mm -hmm. not crying. Like usually, crying is not a feeling that I like. I don't know. It, it doesn't just like spontaneously well up inside me. I guess like when I'm mm -hmm. the stuff that I'm working on is not like that. I don't know. I, I guess I was the, the closest is Brunswick. You know. Brunswick's a, kind of a tearjerker, you know. In, yeah, in but a I didn't way. like cry making it. You know, like, right, right. sadness and was not the feeling in me as I was producing it, even your, though it was like made. Your tablet got all malfunctioning. Well, with pe the tears. People say, I mean, some of the best. Yeah, people say that Brunswick makes them cry sometimes, and that feels great. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, people, when when people told me that they cried at the end of Nuzlocke Genocide, that was like one of the proudest moments I've Aww. felt. I was so happy. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't the end. Or it was the, the, it was the second. Of... It was the penultimate episode. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I really tried to go all out and make it an emotional moment, and people were like, "Your fucking Nuzlocke Let's Play series made me fucking cry, dude." I was like, "Yes, yep. I did yep. it. I did the impossible." Um, I uh, so that was I, beautiful. I think... oh, go on, Gib. I, I was just going to say, I don't know whether I would cry even if I deliberately tried to make something emotional like that. Yeah, like, Br like know, Brunswick is weird. sad and emotional, but, like, at no point in actually making it did I, like, oh, did I, like, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, like, when I listen back to uh, to, to my Gurren Lagann part two, you know, when I was making it, even now, like, I, 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 use, I use tracks in there that evoke certain emotions in me. So like like baby universe, which is a uh, what I use when I'm like describing the the two types of characters, like the communists and the Rossus or whatever. Uh, and then later on with the um like the the next song is uh from Bravely Default. It's like the the finale song, and, and like that's like the emotional climax of the video. Like I, I use that song because it really gets me. So you know, kind of just through a, through the fact that. I I steal I steal content from other people and use them in my videos. I kind of get to experience mm. the same emotion as other people. If I had made yeah, the song, I feel maybe that. I wouldn't feel that way. But you know, I, yeah. the brave little toaster. You know, yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah. I think that when yeah. I think that it's hard like that. to You're cry. Worthless. I mean, maybe Sorry, some of the ideas behind an, a work that you're doing might make you really emotional. Like, see that that's what but, I really want to get the at with this. The actual making of the thing. I, I don't think I would ever be in danger of that happening. In danger? Like, Never? Like, the fucking... No, like, I don't know. Just when when you're seeing the actual sausage-making process, 
You know, just like like making a thing and experiencing a thing are just so fucking different from each I other. I cry when I think about how long it took to make these things. <laughs> yeah, that's true. When I think about how when I think about yeah. how far behind I am and how much I hate myself in my that's life. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I get really emotional about my now, own stuff in that sense. The the one I thought would be most likely to have experienced this was Jesse. So Jesse, do you ever cry when you're making or watching your own work? Oh boy. <laughs> Like that, uh, like the wrestle, the wrestle boy, you know, toast for the douchebags. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that one a... seemed like it might. Mm, I don't know about watching them. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've been fucking. Oh man. Jesse hates it's his a... own work a little too much for that. I think. No, no, yeah. I, th- it's a I just think sort of that, feeling. Uh, I'm a. Uh, ooh, doing this podcast has opened something up inside me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm having trouble. Get that demon out. <laughs> Here. Do you feel a tear coming out of your eye? Oh, and another one falling from my other eye. <laughs> um, I'm sure you all know what the intro for this podcast is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Cry Raindrops like keep falling man. on no. my head. <laughs> um, <And> just <laughs> like the guy's feet are too I don't know. Big I've been... I can definitely write things that, like, while I'm writing them, it's bringing, like, yeah. an emotion out yeah. of me that I hadn't confronted yet. And, you know, like, while yeah. I'm putting it on the paper or the fucking word pad document or whatever, it's like, while I'm writing <laughs> it, I'm crying. Or scribbled on the bathroom wall in my own feces. <laughs> you know, however yeah. the writing process takes me, right. Yeah. Like, I've, yeah. I've been writing a thing recently that's been making me cry a lot the whole time. I've just been. Oh, cool. It, it's not for public consumption, though. It's a private thing. But I've been mm-hmm. writing it through, through like just a veil of tears. I'm writing. Is it, it in that tear fan vision. fiction about Ray playing Smash Brothers? Because that no, it it's not a fan <laughs> fiction. It's, evoke those emotions. No, I've yet to finish that because I know that. it'll be too emotional, and I'll have to kill myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, I'm glad to see that uh, you're not a man who only appreciates Asuka, like yeah. a lot of the Asuka fags out there. You're, you to, yeah. to, as well. to jump in on this, uh, you know, this it's question. A, you know who I also... Oh. Um, <laughs> I think a lot about Misato, and I think a lot about that one scene mm-hmm. in particular where she's just, like, coming to terms with the fact that Kaji's probably dead, and she's crying yeah. at the kitchen table. And that little... like Just that, like, piece of animation of her, like, crumpling at the table is, like, so raw and real to me. And, like, yeah. I always think of it, and <laughs> I wrote a little song just to that piece of animation because it's always in Whoa. my head. And so one day I started just singing, and what I ended up singing was the song Desperado by the Eagles. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. It, but instead of Desperado, it was Hey Misato. And, oh, whoa. <laughs> and right, it stuck with right. me. And this Neat. is, like, I've always thought about making this a video. Because I I do this all the time where I'm like pacing around my room and I'll just start thinking about it and going, Hey, Misato, why don't you come to your send? And I'll just start crying like an idiot. You're out because, riding because it, yeah, Because it's so fucking... Wait a minute. Yeah, that's the, such a great wait, song. Wait, the Dark Souls song? What? The, no. Yeah, nigga. A- fucking eagles. And Orlando, why are you such a <laughs> cocksucker? Top to bottom, motherfucker. Well, like, it's not even. Not much fun. It's, it's not even like a, it makes me cry because I'm sad. It makes me cry because it's so stupid and silly that I've like that I've, I've ruined this scene in this show. Because whenever I see it from now on, I'm going to be thinking about the fucking eagles. Wow. I hate the fucking eagles. Oh, God. You know, stupid stuff's the coolest stuff. It's odd because I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, like, I'm racing through all my videos in my mind, trying to think if there's any like that I've made that would make me emotional. But it's odd because I have a, I have some videos that people have told me make them cry, and I have ones that are definitely more emotional. Like you're gonna carry that weight, the Cowboy Bebop video. Um, sure. You know, people told me that made them cry, or some of the more personal stuff, the like S4 Diary stuff from the Pony Days and shit like that. Um, and like, but I don't know. I feel like I go out of my way to undercut emotions in my videos, like where I I I tend to go more for like a numbness when I do get emotional. And my, if you watch, my stuff philosophy like the, is if I have to feel it, then goddamn it, you're all gonna feel it too, <laughs> you yeah. sons of bitches. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's odd. Like I when I think of because Nate, I know you use music to make things emotional and you always have these yep. this yep. sort of overpowering feeling in your videos like hitting like here's yep. all the emotion make and 
I feel like when, I'm taking people on a guided tour when I yeah, do this shit, you know? And it's rare for me to use music in my videos, but when I do, I almost always pick stuff that deliberately won't feel that way, almost. Except, like, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking of the the migraine reviews and insomnia analysis, and probably the most emotional thing I've ever done, which was just copying Jesse's usage of the song mm-hmm. uh, Green Bird from Cowboy Bebop, and I used it at the end of my migraine review. But, like, all the music used throughout that, up until that point, is all, like, depressing songs, but have this very, like, numbing, jaded kind of depression. And, like, that's sort of the way I always present myself, is, like, I don't usually try to say, like, oh, I, I'm very emotional right now. It's more like I feel dead and I feel like I wish I could feel something. I guess this is that's what this whole podcast is. This has been my stance, this whole podcast is I wish I could feel something, but I'm just so <laughs> fucking dead inside and I'm, I feel so neurotic and broken that I don't, I, I'm like struggling to I, eke an emotion I out of something. I have a similar sort of feeling that I feel, I don't feel like I'm dead inside. I just feel like I, I want to be able to cry more. I want to be more emotional because... It seems like, you know, it, maybe it's a it's a curse, but it 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 results in a lot of cool things. Yeah. Like I'd I'd probably be funnier if I could be more emotional. You know, it's uh the the pod D cast is a good place to go listen if you want to hear like me be emotional every single week about the yes. amazing things that happen if in you, One Piece. If you want to hear the exact same speech about how amazing One Piece is and yeah. how gratifying <laughs> it is that there's all these things that were set up for ten uh, years, right. ten whole years of setup paying off. Twenty right here. years now, yeah. yeah, all right. Yeah, that's I do right. like that's the podcast, cast, but you do give that speech every episode. I can't say we, I, we did this one. Oh, I, I'm late with that one, but yeah, okay, yeah whatever. Yeah. Um, all right, that's cool. <laughs> uh, shout out, uh, shout outs to um, specifically the second Genova fight in Final Fantasy VII, where Eris's theme plays while you oh, fight this baby. evil, disgusting Why you gotta do Genova. That to me? Every every I, I'm oh, sorry, there's man. so much in Final Fantasy VII. Every part of that game yeah, makes it's me too cry. much. The scene with Tifa and Cloud under the airship. Oh my god, the, the, the scene in Eris' mom's the house ending. when Barrett's talking about Marlene and how he wants to be oh, there man. for her, but he has also got to fight for the planet and stuff. And when when Barrett goes to see Dine oh, and god. talks the about scene Marlene where, with her, oh, where, where Red much. 13 meets his father and his father is a dead statue. He was a hero! He was a hero! He was a he hero! Wasn't a coward! <laughs> it was all a lie! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's, and there's then there's too that much. scene where you take Barrett on a date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you have yeah. to remind me of that? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's too real, dude. The first, uh, in, the first interracial kiss in video games. <laughs> uh, other shout out. Groundbreaking. To, uh, the, Groundbreaking. The final and scene bold. in uh, in 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 Kingdom Hearts two, where where Roxas and Namine are reunited via Sora and Kyrie's bodies. That <laughs> via the sweet release time. of death. <laughs> well, sort of. Uh, I'm, sort of shout out. I'm still mad that Ben eye rolled me out of my Shirobako thing. That was the only examples I had. Were <laughs> the Kay one thing that made did you feel and you ruined it. Yeah, you took I'm it sorry. away. From I was him. just. I'm. I'm sorry. I was just really bored. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You fucking you Academy what? Award music to be out of my only emotional moment, and now these guys are going through all their examples, and I have nothing left. I'm like <laughs> but, struggling. Oh, there must hey, be oh, something man. else that made me cry. Let's, I have let's nothing. Speak. Let, let's talk about Ben for a minute. Let me tell you, people, um, the most Ben story that I could. That no. that's ever. Happened. Oh, good. It happened oh, no. in our fucking in our Discord server about maybe three or four weeks ago. Maybe Ben remembers I, this. I don't. <laughs> I, was, I think. I uh, what happened? I had like offhandedly mentioned that I was oh, depressed. Oh yeah, no, I do remember, and, <laughs> and I stand by it. Shut up. All right, Let me tell it? the story, you fag. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm just saying, I stand by it. But um, Ben showed up and he's like, "Hey, Jesse." You offhandedly mentioned that you were depressed. Why don't you tell me what's got you so sad? That's not how it's- SHUT UP AND LET ME oh, TELL THE shit. STORY! <laughs> Fine. Was, Go on. And I was like, well, Ben, you know, I feel kind of heartbroken lately. I, I feel kind of sad and depressed about a lot of real deep personal stuff. And Ben goes, oh, on second thought, it's boring and I don't care. Goodbye. <laughs> Ben, you madman! <laughs> First of all, I was being tongue in cheek right from Here the get-go. Here I was confiding in a oh, friend, really? and you I... and you guys wonder why I resent you all, and, yeah. and like other I people was more like... than you. <clears throat> I made some because you said you were depressed, and I was like, "But Jesse, you just got laid. How could you be depressed?" You know, I was yeah, joking. I was joking point. around. <laughs> yeah, and, I was... and then you're like, "I was like," and then you're well, like, "Oh, well, I don't know." You, you, well, sometimes you know Ben. 
um, sometimes, Ben, getting laid, you know, romance can bring out emotions. You know, some normal look, people have look, emotions, and you were like, "Let me, let me fucking, all right, let me just, let me just completely level with you." Like, I was being jokey about it, and I was being, but you know, but there was kind of, I was okay. I'm, I'm, I'm mad, right? I'm mad because I live in Virginia Beach, and I have nowhere to go, and I haven't gotten I laid in a long time. It feels like I'm really mad, and I resent mm-hmm. you, Jesse. Wait, what? I resent you for having had sex recently. <laughs> so there, there, it's out there. I said it. <laughs> And then I come in here, I come in here and I'm like, oh, Jesse, I'm making a joke about how why would you be depressed when you just had sex? And then and then you're like, well, there's you know, this other girl. Oh, she said some something and now I'm in love with her. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I didn't. I just didn't want to hear it. OK, I know. You didn't so, yes, hear it was it. stupid and retarded. <laughs> a joke. And, and, and there you go. I'm not really I'm, I'm not tested. really mad. It's just. It just strikes me as such a... Well, I'm fucking mad how, now. How could you be? A you ben had sex thing. with a girl. It doesn't make... Of course not. I've had sex with... You know what? If you guys are going to be mad at me every time I've just had sex with a girl, then I guess you just always hate me because I've always... I was trying to keep... Girl. I was trying to keep my resentment fucking bottled up and buried deep inside and now it's going... Now you're making it bubble God up. God damn it. You're boiling this that kettle. Okay, let's you're all just, let's that all just kettle, each other. Let's all just let it all out. No. Okay, good. Let's have the area of grievances. <laughs> unzipping other guys is gay. I think I already did my unzipping <laughs> in this true. podcast. There's nothing more gay. <laughs> Let me, uh, all right. I wanted to give one last shout out to uh, Data from Star Trek. <laughs> okay. Picard. What? That's not a joke. What are you, why are you laughing? No, it's no, nothing. just the same it's way. The phrasing, Shut up. It's the way Shut you're up. phrasing it as a shout out. I think that's what makes it funny. <laughs> like, you're not saying, right, let me also mention friend, another character friend, who made me cry. Friend of, friend of the show, I, Data, you know, coming all the way from the Federation. Yeah, I got, I got, Here's my I friend. I give a big you shout know. out to Big Bird, guys. He's like, more of a brother to me than you've ever been, been, Ben. He cares about me. He understands what it means to be human, unlike you, as you've just proven. You know, when Mr. Hooper died and and Big Bird had to learn about death, and he had to confront the yeah. reality that we're all oh, mortal, no, that we all die no, sometimes, Mr. Hooper. that we all die except for him because he's a Muppet who has to, he's cursed with immortality, he has to watch all of his friends die right. forever. That's you know, right. I really want to give a shout out to Big Bird for feeling that feel for me. All right, well, you've ruined it thoroughly, everyone. Congratulations. I hope you had, I hope you're happy with oh, yourselves. Good. This is uh, the best Okay, does anyone have any ever. last... Anyone yeah. have any comments? Mate, we before we started the show, we have, randomly decided to start a new thing. Wait, wait, where I we, have I have one that, more. Com- right. I have one comment I'll, I'll before we go. Okay. I have one comment yeah, before ahead. we go into the ending show, and that is that I've been looking this like half of this time. I've been looking up lists of sad movies on the internet, and I cannot find this fucking sad like weird pseudo romance between like a gothy teenage girl and and like a, and like a schlubby middle aged man. It's like a comedy, but it's a all romance, and it's really sad, and it made me cry. And and I have no and I think it's named Harold and Maude or Butch and Cassidy or is it the it one where they like, like do they go around like killing people or something? No, no, it's, anything like it's, that. No, no, okay. no, no. It's just like if anyone knows what the fuck I'm talking about, please tell me in the comments because I really want to remember what it's called now. Anyway, um, just had yeah, to put so that I just want to point out, uh, for the record, that I didn't actually ruin a party by crying into someone's birthday cake. That was a hypothetical. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> I do not believe you. That's a lie. I was, That's a I was, lie. That was too real. I was real. trying to go off on, like, a funny tangent, and but then did you's like, oh, man, I'm really into this story about how Jesse ruined a birthday I, party. And I'm like, well, I wait a minute. It didn't actually I didn't happen. think the detail about the birthday party was real, but I did think the crying at a party was real. I just assumed you got drunk and cried at a party because that's what happens at every party me and my friends have ever thrown is that someone gets drunk and then cries about their life for like six hours and that's generally how yeah. our how our greet uh, our meet and I greets love, tend to go i love parties parties yeah. are all good um, they're all fun i'm not all referring right. to like party parties i'm talking about like me and three friends hanging out and drinking that's what a party means to me um right. and it usually ends in one of those friends crying about whatever's going on in their life uh, God, for hours. No, no wonder you've lost touch with all your friends. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so we started up a segment this time where, for whatever reason, at the start of the show, we put out a tweet saying we will answer one question that someone has for us on Twitter, and now we will answer mm-hmm. one question. Nate, what's the question? We have chose? no questions. Okay, here we go. I, I, I searched, uh, sorted through them, and I think I found the uh, most provocative of them all. Uh, quick shout out, actually, to uh, at RabbitsFoot99 for their incredible cute duck from uh, Princess Tutu Icon. But anyway, moving on. The actual question is uh, by at Quincy Ackerman. Uh, the question is John Is Quincy there a middle Ackerman, road? Our fifth president. <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> he, he didn't live up to his father's legacy. But uh, uh, is the question is from Quincy Ackerman? He's just it, throwing it, that out there. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, was a, he was a there about, uh, to his friends and family. About seventeenth century politics or eighteenth century. Okay, here's the question. Here's the actual question. Quincy yeah. Ackerman. Yeah. Is there a middle road for normies and non-normies? Uh, what? I, I, no, I, I, I'm yeah, completely yeah, detached from society. Here's and I the thing. Next question. Listens. I'm going to say the answer is uh, it, sort of, uh, because you see, you can you, you need to, in your heart of hearts, be a non-normie, because if you're just a normie, then you're just worthless. But you can put on a, a mask of being a normie, and that's the way that you survive in today's, uh, you know, Does that count as being world. a normie, or is it just wearing no, a No, no, it doesn't. Well, th that's why well, I think that's that what they mean is like, is, like, not being, like, being a normie in some ways, but then being a non-normie in other ways... Can you be a well, sure. being a normie I, I mean, in I terms think, of like I think my brother Victor would be like a perfect middle road between those. He's yeah. you know a, a handsome, uh, personable guy who works with other humans and gets uh, and he's out all the time and has like a functional relationship. But he also like hates everybody and is incredibly neurotic and every part of his body is broken and he's uh, and most especially his brain doesn't function right. So he. <laughs> Is like th he's like the most non-normy person to ever walk in the skin of a normie. So yeah, he's go. the that's, day that's walker. What I'm talking about. Yeah. So how about that? Are we satisfied with that question? Sure. No. Uh, you could ask another uh, one because that one was uh, terrible. Uh, so yeah, it was None, very that, lots of thing. None of them were very good. But oh. okay, here's one. Maybe you'll like this retarded one. None of our one. fans are what very good, but we try. What is the, okay? This is this is from <laughs> at true start true stardust ninety seven. What is the canonical power scale of the PCP? Weakest to strongest? Does that tickle your fancy people? It is that does, what you but want? That's such a big that's question. The, that's yeah. nebulous. I don't know how to quantify well, weak okay. or strong. We, yeah, we, exactly. we can, that, we can that, eliminate that, one we, end of the spectrum because we know cult is both the cutest and the strongest. Say, that should be its own entire fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, we, we can we can question. find that out. We can find that out at Redcon Two with oh, the WrestleMania yeah. Two. Yeah. Oh yeah, the video game. That. Let that decide. So right oh, now, would yeah. it be would it be Hippo is the strongest? I mean, I he guess. won, right? Who he had, like didn't like Kane win or like Triple H or something won one and uh, <laughs> I think it's Triple H. Triple H is the strongest. All right, I, I think, think that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's enough. Uh, so, people, we're going to do this again next time. Uh, we'll, we'll put out another tweet uh, saying that we're recording the PCP. Submit your questions, and we'll look through and we'll answer one at the end. So uh, go subscribe to at TP Crastinators uh, if you want to do that shit. Oh, and again, thanks to uh, at Pop Vulture for the question. Everybody, go submit over the whole week. Go submit your topics, and we'll talk about it on the podcast next time we do one. And uh, that's going to be it. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Hope you enjoyed yourself. Have yourself a good cry. Go uh, play Kingdom Hearts 2. Go cry about how sad and beautiful it is. And uh, have a wonderful day. Uh, Merry bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I'm supposed to be working right now. I'm supposed to. It's quite the burden, it's a hard knock life, being a genius. <laughs>